which is polypodium leucotomus extract. Uh, and I'm going to talk about some of the data and information on this uh, photoprotective anti-aging oral supplement. Um, and it's, it's an over-the-counter supplement. Uh, it's produced by Ferndale. Um, and, and you'll see data from a study we just completed, um, Dr. Berman and myself, uh, with some very, very interesting results. And important disclosures here for Ferndale, an advisory board of consultant, and we had research grants for this study. I think it's very important for the state of Colorado to talk about plants and their benefits. Um, people seem to like to use plants in a variety of different ways here. Uh, often plants that look a lot like this one, but don't seem to have the same qualities. Heliocare or polypony leucotonus is actually a supplement, and uh, it's said that it's a natural anti-aging supplement with antioxidant effects on the skin um, and helps maintain your skin's ability to protect sun against uh, sun-related effects. Of course, if you hear a million commercials, this has to be followed by these statements have not been evaluated for the Food and Drug Administration. <coughs> Excuse me. It is not uh, intended to diagnose, treat, or cure, or prevent any disease. We're going to talk about some studies, some really good studies, that are most often done with drugs, but this is going to be talking about a supplement. And the applications of this supplement are photoprotection, uh, prevention of photoaging, prevention of actinic damage and skin cancer, sun-sensitive conditions such as rosacea and melasma, as well as conditions such as polymorphous light eruption, um, drug-induced, uh, disease-induced, such as uh, basal nevus and XP, um, and even aesthetic co-treatment and maintenance. So we know that the aging of the skin occurs both intrinsic and extrinsic, and we're primarily going to talk about extrinsic, which is due to sun exposure pollution, smoking, diet, etc. And sun exposure really causes the most wrinkles and certainly uh, skin cancers, we know that, and I don't have to tell this group that, but there's other environmental conditions, such as uh, weather, pollution, uh, that also affects this, and even extreme weather. Um, we're here in Colorado in the winter time. It's not just UV that's disturbing the skin, it's also the cold weather blowing, especially on the face. Uh, and the main culprit of that are reaction o reactive oxygen species, free radicals, causes damage to DNA, proteins, and lipid cell membranes. Many sources of free radicals, UV is the primary source that we're concerned about as dermatologists, but smoking is also a tremendous and can release 10 quadrillions free radicals in the lung uh, with each cigarette. And the, and the reason is this is a fascinating study that looked at twins with smoking in the skin, uh, and uh, the bottom line is that a five-year difference in smoking, there was a significantly notable difference in facial aging with everything else controlled for. So smoking with these free radicals does cause aging of the skin. From our perspective, we have UV light that causes these reactive oxygen species uh, with MMPs and pro-collagen promoters, which increases collagen breakdown, reduces collagen uh, production, and of course causes damage to the cells. So these are the chronic effects, and we know the uh, photoaging effects, but also certainly actinics, uh, squamous cell carcinomas, basal cells, and melanomas. Now antioxidants are known uh, primarily in the plant world um, we take them all the time with vitamins, vitamin E, etc. Uh, and they uh, develop free radical fighting um, as a natural defense in the plant. The plant actually does this natural. And if we take some of these, especially these carotenoids, uh, polyphenols, and flavonoids, um, they can help us as antioxidants in the very well uh, studied. Well, polypodium has got very high antioxidants of many of these, of uh, chlorogenic acid, caffeinic acid, um, uh, as well as many others. Uh, and it's uh, also increased in a concentration in a manner. And this may uh, really be one of the keys to the health benefits of this. So what's the case for the use of these as part of the photoprotective effect? Well, first in mouse studies, the short of it is when you apply, it decreases UV-associated tumors. Just applying it to the skin here, you can see the difference on the bottom there uh, with uh, uh, polypodium. Without, uh, with UV alone, it's 12 of 23, and either if you apply it before or apply it uh, after you get the UV, it drops it down dramatically. Um, these were mice that were fed um, and the, uh, uh, poly, polypodium extract, 
And what you see here is uh, an increase in the P53 gene, um, which is a very positive effect, and this uh, mediates the DNA repair of dimers uh, and oxidative products. Well, what happens in humans? Well, this is very interesting because there's something known as the common deletion, uh, which is a photoaging marker. Uh, and this was a study that was done that looked at common deletion uh, in patients uh, using MEDs. And this is the short of it. There's a dramatic um, decrease uh, in uh, the change uh, in the deletion of the gene uh, in the, with the use of polypodium uh, at all MED levels. Um, skin cancer also comes from using the associated immunosuppression, but can photoprotection actually prevent anti-aging? And this was a great study that was published recently in the Annals of Internal Medicine, uh, where they looked at uh, patients randomly uh, using different amounts of sunblock, uh, and, and the short of it is that regular sunscreen use um, does retard skin aging in healthy middle aged uh, men and women uh, and uh, there was 24% uh, less skin aging in the group, uh, the sunscreen group versus the discretionary. So using sunscreen all the time can help and we know that polypodium uh, also uh, in this study in vitro can uh, act as a photoprotective effect. So the answer for that is yes, both on a macro, uh, a uh, an overall level as well as a cellular level. And uh, I want to point out one guy, Salvador Gonzalez, he's, a, um, he's actually a dermatologist and oncologist. He did most of his work at Sloan Kettering and has done some amazing work on this because there's actually a lot of work that's being looked at with this as an anti-cancer um, supplement or drug uh, at that point and uh, looked at the overall expression of those things that uh, was associated with aging of the cell, including MMPs, etc. Uh, and showed that this was indeed effective. Um, so overall, the, uh, the science behind this is that um, uh, polypodium leucotonus can maintain the ability to protect against sun-related effects. With all, a lot of what I've talked about, inflammation, and it seems to be a very good anti-inflammatory, reactive oxygen species, uh, DNA damage, sunburn cells, MMPs, uh, and the like. Um, and, and based on that, there's also, and I'll talk a little bit about aesthetics coming up uh, during lunch, uh, a nice photo uh, damage protection, antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, prevention of aberrant pigmentation. All of these are not just a health-related aspect, it's also a, an aesthetic aspect as well. Now, PLA has been taken uh, by millions of patients uh, over the world for 25 years um, as a daily supplement. Um, and essentially, there really have been no significant adverse effects that have ever been reported about this. But, but clinicians have still been talking about the need for a blinded study for both safety and efficacy. So we undertook a study, and this is the first time this has ever been presented, and there's going to be a poster associated with this, hopefully coming today, and the uh, FedEx and Dr. Byrne and myself uh, performed this. And the objectives were to determine the safety of oral polypodium leucotomus taken as a dietary supplement twice a day, uh, 240 milligrams twice a day for eight weeks, based on assessments through clinical history, physical findings, and laboratory tests, and looking at the efficacy of it uh, taken twice a day uh, by determining uh, a change or an increase in the subject's MED, but not the acute MED, in other words, not MED right after they took it, but actually whether there was a reservoir effect and an MED 24 hours after they took it, as well as uh, the frequency of sunburn. It was a randomized double-blind placebo-controlled trial. Male and female subjects 18 to 65, skin types 1 to 4, good health, and an absence of their, uh, dietary, uh, daily medications. 40 subjects were randomized, 20 in the uh, polypodium group and 20 in the placebo. They took the, uh, uh, the supplement twice a day, 8 and 2 for 56 days. We uh, got history of sunburn prior to, for the eight weeks prior, in each group, and then during the study. And then 24 patients within this, we randomized uh, in each uh, case 12 and 12 uh, to look at the MED at the beginning of the study, um, and then again uh, at uh, four weeks later. So overall, the safety was assessed uh, at clinical history, review of systems, physical exam, uh, comprehensive laboratory tests, as well as AEs. Um, we looked at sunburns captured, as I said, 
Um, MED uh, was uh, uh, looked at at 28 days. And I also looked at uh, erythema intensity analysis. What that is, when you look at an MED, you want to compare uh, the, each uh, degree of intensity of each of the cells of the MED. And this is essentially, we use this device to do the study. So safety, after 56 days, there were no adverse effects, no abnormal findings on physical exam or significant abnormal labs in either group. Four subjects of the Heliot crew group reported uh, either transient mild fatigue, bloating, headache, uh, and one subject of the placebo group reported uh, fatigue. Uh, this was not significant at all. These were all very minor, minor and they weren't thought to be associated with the medication. Um, the sunburns. So, subjects in each group had no significant differences regarding hours of sun exposure before or during the study, but subjects in the placebo group showed a six-fold greater incidence of at least one sunburn during the study uh, time than in the helio group, or prayer group. And what you can see here is, okay, so no sunburns. Again, most patients did not have sunburns, which we certainly didn't tell patients to go out and get sunburns. But what you can see here is at least one sunburn, only two in the helio care group, and eight in the placebo, and this was uh, significantly, uh, 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 statistically significant. Um, change in MED, um, the subjects in the helio care group had a 22-fold greater incidence of an increased MED uh, compared to the placebo group after uh, 21 days, 28 days. And what you can see here is that increased MED in the helio care was eight versus one in the placebo. And you can see here, this was highly statistically significant. And similarly, with the overall um, uh, in erythema intensity across the uh, different uh, uh, panels for the MED, this showed a 15-fold greater incidence of reduction. And again, this was also highly significant here. Um, we looked at the issue of non-responders. There were really too few non-responders in the helio care group. We wanted to see if it was a dose-weight relationship. Uh, and here are the scattergrams, and there were just too few patients to make any determinations of this whatsoever. We're going to probably look at non-responders and increase the dose and see if it makes a difference. So, this was interesting. Um, Helio care is, uh, or polyponium leukotomus, and there are different forms of polyponium out there. I want to make that clear. They take different parts of the firm. All of the studies have been done with this uh, one from a, a company in Spain. They actually have very special um, areas where they grow this fern in two places in South America to make it very, very almost drug-like e even to make sure they get the same effect that they take a special part of the plant. Um, it shows a statistically significant and meaningful reduction in UV effect and damage as well as reduction in actual sunburns. It appears to have a reservoir effect when you take it uh, all the time. And there was an inadequate number of subjects to assess characters of uh, non-responders. So overall, um, in summary, photo damage and other environmental factors, as we say, um, can affect aging of the skin and certainly uh, skin cancers. Uh, PLA appears to be, in many, many studies, a very powerful antioxidant and anti-inflammatory supplement. Um, the efficacy has been shown in animal and clinical models, as well as clinical benefit for PMLE, melasma, and other conditions. And our new study has uh, shown that uh, the daily supplementation seems to be safe and effective in reducing burns and UV-associated damage as measured by MED.